morning, everybody. Um, I am almost so relaxed I can't give this talk, but uh, I'm going to muster the energy. Um, my name is Adam Hunt. I am a survivor. You can applaud. It's okay. Here we go. Talk's over. I'm just kidding. A um, couple of disclaimers real quick. Um, number one, I have no PowerPoint slides. Number two, I offer you no statistics whatsoever. Um, and uh, number three, I am a physician, so it puts me in kind of an interesting position to give you a talk today. Um, so I will try to offer you some of my insights as both a physician and as a patient. Um, and I have a little card here that's going to remind me how to keep on task. Uh, one side is my uh, uh, grocery list. So if I start reading from that, please just you know try to point me in the right direction. Um, but I will say, um, one of my first um, things that I want to tell you about is I, I, I'm not just a survivor. There are other um, descriptions I have for myself. Um, so I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a friend, I'm a colleague. Um, I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, I'm a believer. I'm going to circle back on some of these things, and I want to give you some important messages today. Um, and hopefully this will mean something to you guys as you move forward. Um, number one, my first inter interaction with, uh, with Dr. Fetcher was, uh, was an interesting one that kept, uh, that kind of stuck with me. Um, and the first time we met, uh, she, she told me, you know, she kind of gave me some guidance about how to, how to move forward, what to expect. Um, <laughs> And one of the funny things that she said to me, she goes, you know, I normally, I normally don't tell patients this, but uh, um, I, I, I got to put you on a diet. And I was like, <laughs> I go, I got to appreciate that from an oncologist. She goes, I, I want to make your body healthier so that, you know, you, so that the immunotherapy will work for you. I go, I can appreciate that. And she goes, you know, you know how, how, much, how much alcohol do you drink? And I go, yeah, I, yeah, I, I have a couple drinks a week. I don't, I don't know. She goes, can you, can you be a teetotaler? And I go, I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and she goes, she goes, really, she goes, you know, you have metastatic disease in your liver. Um, I really think it's important, you know, let's, let's cut out the alcohol. Let's cut out the Tylenol. We really need to focus on making sure that your body is nice and healthy so that you can fight off this melanoma. And I go, okay. Yeah, we can do that. And then she goes, also, um, she goes, do you, have, do you have any kids? And I go, nope, don't have any kids. Um, and she goes, okay, um, whatever you do, you and your wife cannot get pregnant while you're on this medicine, okay? I go, all right, okay. So I'm sitting there sweating, going, um, okay, so I have a few coping mechanisms in my life. Uh, you've taken away like 90% of them, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, Okay, so nothing like delivering a bunch of bad news and saying, oh, by the way, you can use none of your coping me mechanisms whatsoever. And I go, if you tell me that I cannot have a sense of humor during, during all this, I go, we, it is, we're done here. We are absolutely done here. Uh, she goes, no, 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 that's, she goes, that's fine. She goes, actually, that's, that's encouraged. That's good. She goes, I want you to be who you are, but there's a couple of, couple of little disclaimers that, you know, that I want you to stay, uh, you know, stay away from. I go, okay, I'm, I'll be a good boy. Um, so that was... That was my, my first interaction with, uh, with Dr. Fetcher. And, you know, we're still together today. She has been a wonderful doctor. But my, uh, uh, my first advice to you guys, be open and honest with your physician. You need to have a good working relationship with your physician. You need to trust them. You need to be honest with them. And, I mean, if you come off the, you know, if you come off the tracks a little bit and, you know, maybe you're not doing something that you're supposed to, it's okay. Make sure that they're aware of that. Okay, but that's my, my first bit of advice is make sure that you have a good working relationship with your physician um, because that is, that is a two-way street. You know, there are things that you need to do as a patient and there are things that they need to do as a physician. And if you're honest with each other, it's going to make your life a whole bunch easier. All right, let me check my grocery list. Okay, um, a couple other speakers have talked about this. Activate your support network. Talk to your family, talk to your friends, get them involved in what's going on with you. You never know 
when you're going to have to lean on somebody. So if there are people around you that you're going to have to activate or that you're going to have to lean on, make sure they know what's happening with you, okay? Because you never know when you're going to need your, your friends to come over and fill your refrigerator worth of food um, so that you can feed your family. So tell those people around you. And, it, and every, people want to help you. They absolutely want to help you. I mean, I had, you know, cousins that, that I haven't talked to in a while. Um, I had my, you know, my aunt and uncle, like, people were calling me, what can I do for you? Help me help you. Help me, you know, figure out what we need to do to get through this. And I will tell you, people will come out of the woodwork, people that you don't expect. People will surprise you. So make sure that you, you know, you let people know what's going on with you. So, um, Believe in yourself, okay? This is something that if you believe in what's happening, you believe in yourself, you can do it. Even though it is a kind of a tall order, you have no idea the abilities that your mind and body have. Has anybody read uh, Can't Hurt Me by uh, uh, Goggins? He's a Navy SEAL guy. He went through all kinds of training and stuff like that. He was a guy who... He wanted, he was in the, the, the reserves and he wanted to go through the BUDS Navy SEAL training. And they said, you know what? The last time you have an opportunity to go through this is in three months. You are 106 pounds over the weight. And you know what he did? He lost 106 pounds in three months. I do not recommend that to anybody, <laughs> but I'm just saying. That was his goal, and he wanted to get there, so he ran every single day. He did all kinds of all kinds of dieting stuff, but he got to where he needed to go. And that book is very compelling in the mind over matter kind of situation. And now that guy is an ultra runner. He does all kinds of crazy marathons and stuff like that. And he started out as a guy who was, you know, hundred some pounds overweight, you know, spraying for cockroaches. But he changed his life. And I'll tell you this. Believe in yourself because you have no idea what you are capable of. Um, believe in God. You need a partner in this, okay? If you can't talk to yourself, if you can't talk to your family, talk to him, okay? You need to strengthen your faith. Whoever that is with, strengthen your faith. Um, and believe in the treatment because it works. Uh, raspberries, strawberries, okay, sorry. Um, okay, my next thing, rig the battlefield, okay? Be a fighter, be a warrior. Make sure your body is working in your benefit, okay? What I mean by that is if you can do things that suppress the cancer, that work against the cancer, while you are supporting your immune system to let the medication work, that is what I call rigging the battlefield, okay? Your body is the battlefield. Go do your research. Be careful where you get it from. Um, you know, Google is, a, is, a, is something that can work in your benefit, and it can work against you. So be careful of where you're getting your, uh, your information. But, you know, dig into antioxidant, uh, you know, foods. Those are things that kind of work against the free radicals in your body. Um, you know, your berries, your strawberries, your blueberries, your raspberries, stuff like that. Go do your, I, I drank a ton of pomegranate juice. That was my thing when I first started. I was like, okay, I got I to gotta figure out what I need to do about this. So I went and I drank, you know, a ton of pomegranate juice. And I was eating my berries and I was making my shakes and stuff like that. And I remember when I, I'd tell Dr. Fresh, oh, this, this is what I'm doing. She's like, okay, 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 good, okay. So um, anyways, and uh, look for foods and activities that help you support your immune system. So eat the, you know, put the put the appropriate fuel in the tank so that it can uh, it can give you some energy and uh, try to stay away from a lot of the processed foods. You know, we talked you talked about you know you wanted to be careful of what you put in your body. You didn't want to put in all the toxins stuff like that. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to go to a, a completely plant based, but that's what a lot of people do. They go to a plant based diet and they try to get all the processed foods and all the you know all that stuff out of their system, and that's uh, and, 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 that's, and that's good. So figure out what your goals are so that you can support your body 
you know, through this stuff because it is a, it's, it's a marathon. It's something that you got to make long-term changes uh, to help support your body. Um, and this is not something that, you know, that, that goes away. I'll say, that, you know, this is one of those things where you, you want to make changes throughout your, throughout your whole life that you can keep doing. Get your exercise. It doesn't have to be going to the gym for six hours a day. Um, but, you know, go walk for 30 minutes. Go down get on the treadmill. Do something that helps stimulate your body because research has shown that, you know, doing some sort of exercise makes your immune system stronger. So that's one of those, uh, those things I encourage you to go do some research. You can talk to nutritionists. You can talk to the people that, you know, uh, uh, that work with people on immunotherapy. I know there's dietitians that are available through uh, um, uh, the cancer center, but uh, make sure that you uh, talk to people so that you can support your body um, through this kind of stuff. Get your rest, get sleep, but th during those awake hours, you know, try to be, uh, try to be active. Take your vitamins. That was one thing that, you know, somebody pulled me aside at a conference I was going to and he goes, he goes, you know, I went through something similar and he goes, he goes, you, are you taking vitamins? I go, not yet. And he goes, take your vitamins. I'll say, make sure that you're getting those, uh, uh, getting all those micronutrients and things like that, that will, uh, will help your immune system. But everybody's a little different. Go do, go figure out what works for you. Um, and that's all. And, and that's one of those things that you want to make your body as healthy as you possibly can so that the immunotherapy does what it needs to do. A um, couple of quick stories to leave you with. Um, I think it was interesting that, you know, we're talking about kind of changing your body, making it, making it healthier. 20 years ago, I lived across Palmer Field in uh, Alice Lloyd over here. I went to school here um, as an undergrad. And right where I'm standing was this dirty, beat up, liquor store that all the people from the dorms would come over to and buy, you know, overpriced pop tarts and energy drinks and all that kind of stuff. So I find it ironic when I'm talking about, you know, increasing a healthier body that there was this beat up liquor store here 20 years ago. And now there's this beautiful uh, auditorium and facility. So I thought that was kind of ironic. Um, and the, uh, the other thing I, I'll say, when I started my treatment, I wanted to share this quick story with you um, because it has to do with amet melanoma. And, uh, I started my treatment um, on, in September of 2017. I was diagnosed with stage, stage four melanoma. And uh, um, I started my treatment a couple weeks later. Um, and two days after I got the Ip, Ipi Nevo combo, I remember it was the day of the AIM at Melanoma Walk. And um, when I say I'm a teacher, I'm a, I teach residents, I'm, a, I'm an ER doctor. Um, I teach residents and they all, and not all of them, because some of them had to work, but a vast majority came down and did the walk. And I was going to try to go to the walk, and I literally couldn't get out of bed. And I'd never, that had never happened to me before. And I, I, I remember I, I woke up, and I told my wife the night before, I go, I really want to get to this walk. It's, it's important. All my residents are going. And I, I, I literally could not muster the energy to get out of bed. I had to have my wife Help me out of bed just so I go to the bathroom. And I went to the bathroom and she helped me back to bed. And she goes, don't even think about going anywhere. I go, well, maybe, maybe you can drive me down. She goes, I don't think you heard me. She goes, don't even think about it. She goes, you're staying here. If you want to text somebody, if you want to call somebody, say good luck at the, at the walk or something like that, that's fine. But you are, you are not leaving. And the rest of the day, I'm happy I didn't move because I, I, I could not get out of bed without help. And that was kind of one of those days where I sat there and I had a, you know, a little, a little conversation with myself about what was, uh, what was happening. But that was, it was scary. It was a scary moment for somebody who's active, somebody who's, you know, working full time, somebody who's my age to not be able to get out of bed. That was tough. That was a tough day. And when you talk about that mental toughness, you, you got to find it as patients, as, as family members, because you got to be tough. You know, that, that's a two way road. You'll be tough. If you're the patient, you got to be tough for yourself. And I'll say, if you're a family member, that's going to be even, you know, and that, that situation, I can't even imagine how tough that was on my wife. All of a sudden seeing, you know, seeing her husband can't get out of bed. That's, that's rough. Um, so anyways, the aim at Melanoma Walk, those of you that live in the area is, uh, I think the first Sunday of October every year. Um, I have thankfully walked in it the last two years. 
I vowed, I said, you know, when I couldn't get out of bed that one time, I said, I go, I'm, I'm going to this walk next year, and I'm going to go to the, the year after, and then I'm going to start running in it. So, but I've been the last two years, and I've walked in it. Um, and I will share you I share a quick little uh, uh, advice about, um, since I'm an ER doctor, what it means to come to the emergency department um, when you're going through your treatment, even when you're not going through your treatment. Um, because I've had patients, I've, I've, you know, I've had, I've had patients of, you know, Dr. Fetcher come through, and it's so funny because my colleagues are like, oh, yeah, this person's they're on immunotherapy. You need to go see him. Okay, yeah, I'll go see him. He, some of the ER doctors are very scared about this medicine because they, they don't, they don't understand it fully. And I'll say that's, you know, me admitting some of the flaws of the medical system, but I'll say that's, that's one of those things we don't fully understand exactly what's going on. Um, and I will tell you, when people come to the emergency department having been a patient there and also having been a doctor there, um, doctors that, you know, we wanna, we wanna know everything. We absolutely wanna know everything. We wanna be the ones to take care of you when you come into the emergency department. We don't wanna, you know, accept the fact that maybe we need to call somebody else, but I will tell you as, as patients and as patient advocates, you need to say, will you please just call the oncologist? Like, you, you, do your workup, I mean, that's okay, but just please get them involved in their care. And that's important in this setting. And I can't emphasize that, you know, the mo you know any, any more than I, I am right now, but have them call. Just say, here's the cart. And I'll say, as a patient, she goes, here's your thing, here's the medicines you're on, keep it in your wallet. Here's the, you know, here's the phone number, keep that in your wallet. And when you, when you go somewhere and somebody's taking care of you, get that stuff out and show them, show them what you're on. And I went in one time because I had, you know, just, you know, I'm, went to a conference someplace, picked up something bad at the airport. It happens. And uh, just I, another, another one of those like just vomiting, diarrhea, felt horrible. Felt, and, and then it's like, oh, do I have colitis? Do I got one of the itises? Um, and uh, I went and it just turns out I had, you know, I picked up a virus or something like that. But uh, they didn't want to call the oncologist. I said, just, just call them. And as I got more like, you know, pumped up with fluids and things like that, I got out the card. I called them and I was like, Listen, the doc doesn't want to call you. I'm calling you, letting you know what's what's going on. And they were like, oh, well, thanks for the phone call. Um, but I will tell you, every time I have one of the patients in there, I'm calling. I call, and, you know, they may have changed the, you know, the therapy, the treatment, the lab work, that kind of stuff. But they want to know when something is going, you know, going wrong with their patients. And they want to know soon, because if there's something that needs to happen in a timely fashion, they want to know sooner rather than later. Yes? Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. So, um, this is a tough situation. Um, do whatever you can, you know, be your own patient advocate. Um, you know, family members gotta be the advocate, uh, but this is, uh, uh, and know that, you know, you are supported by more people than you realize. On that note, I wanna thank you for your time.